2015, in the darkness of midnight, a team of Mexican Marines led by a man named El Marino Loco stormed the house of an infamous drug lord, El Mimido, to capture him. After El What does he got, a meat tenderizer up to his chin? What's he holding right there? After El Mimido was successfully captured, El Marino Loco took laws into his own hands by making El Mimido wear a female dress and... Oh! That look like a different dude, but he probably just runs around making all kind of dudes wear dresses. Dress and kiss his hitman in a bid to amuse his squad. This okay, that's a little weird, kissing his hitman. Wear a female dress and kiss his hitman in a bid to amuse his squad. This action and so many others by El Marino Loco made him hated and feared by almost every drug lord in Mexico. But before we get into the details, we need to first answer the question, who is El Marino Loco? The Mystery Man Eric Morales Guevara, alias El Marino Loco, was an infantryman in the Mexican Navy. He's described by his peers to be dark-skinned, 5 foot 7 inches tall and having an amazing athletic build. He never showed his face, always wearing a hoodie, a mask or sunglasses so even his eyes couldn't be seen. And he had good reasons to do this because many drug lords were after him. But make no mistake, this didn't scare him at all. El Marino Loco and the team of Marines under his command were determined to crack down every single drug lord in the states of Tamaulipas and Nuevo León. But it wasn't just capturing drug lords that made El Marino Loco famous. It was what he made him do that really put him in the spotlight. El Marino on several occasions made high-profile drug lords dress up in female lingerie and sometimes he went as far as making them do homosexual acts. All right, well... <laughs> there's making a point and then there's making a point. I mean, I guess you're trying to get them to the ultimate humiliation, but at what point is you, you're not weird for that yourself? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're on some other shit. But before you rule El Marino's actions as being absurd, you first need to know just how dangerous these drug lords were and why in some way, many would say that they deserve the treatment given to them by El Marino Loco. The Ruthless Gulf Cartel El Marino Loco was primarily operating in the state of Tamaulipas. Man, look at that, boy. They on top of each other. It's like they take away the sky from us with urban area. You know what I'm saying? You go out you go out to a, a campo or you go out to, a, a, you know, a rural area somewhere. You can see distance. When it comes to urban scenarios, man, they take the sky away from you. You only get this slit over the buildings, you know, this slit of the street. This is the sky that you get. Otherwise, you can't see shit. But so was the infamous and notorious Gulf Cartel. And if there's one thing you need to know about this cartel, it's the fact that they showed no mercy in their operations around- Has there ever been a cartel that showed mercy? I think every cartel is merciless. Mexico. No one dared cross paths with these guys. They had the local police and residents in the area under their control. They did whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Apart from the exportation of drugs to the U.S. and Western Africa, the Gulf Cartel was involved in money laundering, extortion, kidnapping, arms trafficking, and many other illegal acts that put their organization in the bad books of El Marino Loco. But there was one particular activity carried out by the Gulf Cartel that led El Marino Loco and other Mexican Marines to really hunt them down. Their involvement in Mexico's largest prostitution network. Around the time El Marino Loco was deployed to the city of Tamaulipas, the Gulf Cartel started a prostitution ring that involved the kidnapping of sex workers and trafficking of women in the country. More than 200 hey, girls went missing in the state, and a lot more <laughs> were used like by the country. More than that involved the kidnapping of sex workers and trafficking of women in the country. More than 200 girls went missing in the state, and a lot more were used by this cartel as informants. So it wasn't a question of, did these cartel drug lords deserve a brutal punishment for their crimes? It was more of, who would get the job done? Absolutely, I mean, you've gone to a different place. You're not, you're not selling dope no more. You've gone to a different place when you're kidnapping people and you're forcing people into slavery and you're making kids work for you and all that shit. You done stepped off into another level. When you get into the game and you acquire some sort of power, man, like, you don't know what it is to, to, to get pressed. You know what I'm saying? Then when you get pressed, you fall apart. And that's where El Marino Loco comes back into the picture. Abuse of power. 2006, a series of videos from El Marino Loco got millions of views on YouTube, making him kind of famous. These were videos of El Marino Loco and his team humiliating drug lords they had captured. 
and this little fame that El Marino acquired came right after he was assigned to the border city of Reynosa. His order was to capture the presumed regional leader of the Gulf Cartel in Reynosa, Julian Luisa Salinas, aka El Comandante Toro. El Marino was so close to capturing Comandante Toro, but out of nowhere, he was transferred to the city of Tamaulipas, where he became the Gulf Cartel's number one enemy. This obviously made El Marino Loco furious, considering Julian was one of his biggest enemies. And although destiny eventually delivered Salinas to the hands of El Marino Loco, as you'll find out in a bit, the next set of drug lords he dealt with would have wished they were never born. Rather, I wonder what his beef was, you know what I'm saying? Did he have a personal experience? Was there something that drew him to this type of behavior? Was, or, or you know, to this vendetta? Or was he just being the best officer, the best Marine that he could be? Then do the things El Marino made them do. His operation was to raid the house of the former mayor of Altamira, Avenal Hernandez Llano, who according to reports was working with the Gulf Cartel. But on getting to Llano's residence, El Marino met Llano and his son who instead redirected him and his team to the house of the Gulf Cartel leader in the area, Silvestre Aro Rodriguez, also known as El Chive. El Chive was so a wait, Bestre, they, they ran up on the deal. mayor and then His the own. mayor gave up the boss of the town? Hold on, hold on. But on getting to Yano's residence, El Marino met Yano and his son who instead redirected him and his team to the house of the Gulf Cartel leader in the area, Silvestre Aro Rodriguez, also known as El Chive. It looked like they smacked him up a little bit too. El Chive was a bigger fish to catch, so El Marino took the bait. But it was from this point on that he began taking the law into his own hands. On getting to El Chive's house, El Chive himself was nowhere to be found, and El Marino wasn't the type of guy to just walk away without leaving a mark. So he raided El Chive's house, destroyed his valuables, even stole the ashes of El Chive's late father, and also marred a photograph of his father found on the premises. Obviously, Loco could have left without doing these things, but he did them anyway. And to make matters worse, on his way out of El Chiva's house, he stumbled upon three thugs whom he beat to a pulp, all in a bid to get the actual location of El Chiva. And seemingly, he knew how to get answers out of people, because shortly after, El Chiva... Now, is he just a psychopath like them? That had he not, have been a, he not been a Marine, he'd have been in the cartel? Quite possible. I believe there's a lot of cops like that. Would have gang banged otherwise. Chive was eventually captured in a hospital in Tampico, and his brother, Marco Antonio Otto Rodriguez, was also captured a few days later. But El Marino Loco wasn't done. During the same operation, Loco carried out yet another of his humiliation acts on El Mimido, a drug lord under the Gulf Cartel. This is where it became clear that El Marino didn't care how tough or strong these drug lords were. He was afraid of no one, making sure these criminals passed through hell before he handed them to Mexican police to take legal action. El Marino forced El Mimido to wear a lady's dress, put on some lip gloss, and kiss his own hitmen, while Loco and his team recorded and made fun of him. When the video was posted on social media, everyone was angry at Loco. And I mean everyone. Leaders of the Gulf Cartel, the public, and even officers in the Mexican Marines. Several Navy officials called his methods unorthodox and unprofessional. Despite the huge success El Marino Loco and his team had gotten in capturing these drug lords. Since the Gulf Cartel seemingly was unable to catch him, they instead tried bribing him with the most expensive gifts, the best of alcohol, and the sexiest of women. But El Marino Loco sent every gift back, saying he couldn't be bribed. Neither would he rest until every drug lord within his reach was captured. But That boy was on a mission. Again, like your vid says, bullies with a uniform. But here's my question. They're bullying bullies at this point, right? So I think that makes it a noble effort. Does it? Does it not? Probably a noble effort right there. He bullying buddies. Uh, somebody, I get hopefully fighting on the sides of the kids. Why exactly did El Marino have to humiliate these drug lords? He could have just captured them and taken them into custody, right? Well, not quite. Loco himself gave his reason for humiliating them by saying this. They made that decision to be thugs, and among the thugs, there has to be someone who's in charge. So that man must be consistently macho and bossy. So when I grab him, dress him as women, humiliate them, make him kiss with others, dance and pose as a woman, it's a way of humiliating them and reminding them that they're never going to be what they think they are. I can't say I disagree with that, uh, with that notion, especially with all of the exploitation of children and women that I see come from the cartel. I can't be... Uh, 
I can't judge this guy for what he's doing. Most certainly, if he was on the other side, he'd probably be doing that to innocent people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the fact is, he's bullying the bullies at this point. You know what I mean? So he got a point there. So so And it's basically like the same reason they, quote unquote, threw Osama bin Laden's body in the ocean. They don't want... They don't want to uh, give people a shrine or something to see or, or, you know, something that can lift them. No, he's taking their idols and he's breaking them down to what they really are. When they're under his thumb, they're not they're not the men that oppressed people. They're the men being oppressed at that point. Salute to y'all. Hit the like button. Here we go. And El Marino Loco had a point. In the country of Mexico, the masculinity of drug lords was taken very seriously. So emasculating these so-called drug lords wasn't only insulting, it was in some way stripping them of their role as a leader. It officially became a war between the entire Gulf Cartel and El Marino Loco. But if there's one thing we've come to realize about El Marino, it's the fact that he never, and I mean never, backs down from a fight. The peak of his time in the Mexican Navy came when he had a standoff with his longtime enemy, Julian Manuel Luisa Salinas, known as Comandante Toro. So he finally got to the guy that he'd been trying to get to all this time, because remember, they were about to get to him and then they switched him out uh, and put him in another, uh, in another area. As I've said before, Comandante was the head of the Gulf Cartel Reynosa, Tamalipas. Toro had his crew kidnap a Mexican Marine and demanded a ransom of 1.5 million pesos from his family. The family could only pay 800,000 pesos, which led the Gulf Cartel to kill this Marine. But little did they know that that was the biggest mistake they could have ever made. Y'all tweaked. Y'all done got one of his boys? He's on some Punisher shit now. But little did they know that that was the biggest mistake they could have ever made. The Mexican government obviously wanted to retaliate against this cruel action, and there was no better man for the job than El Marino Loco himself. Loco had been on the trail of Toro, so it was an opportunity for him to finally take the drug lord down. April 2015, it was time for the final battle. El Marino Loco and his team set up 32 highway street blockades with about 11 of them set up using burning vehicles. These blockades were to prevent Comandante Toro from leaving the city. And during the last gun battle between the Mexican Marines and Comandante... So the Marines was even burning whips out there and putting whips along the street uh, to block them in. Lord down. April 2015, it was time for the final battle. El Marino Loco and his team set up 32 highway street blockades, with about 11 of them set up using burning vehicles. These blockades were to prevent Comandante Toro from leaving the city. And during the last gun battle between the Mexican Marines and Comandante, Toro was finally shot and killed in the operation. But that's not the end of this story. After the operation, El Marino went back to the house of the kidnapped Marine. He then accidentally stepped on a little artifact placed on the ground. He asked the wife of the kidnapped Marine what it was and she told him it was a meat tenderizer. He asked if he could take it along with him. But she asked what he wanted to use it for. And in a husky tone, he said, Hit the thugs. And that, people, was how he not only got the infamous meat tenderizer he used to beat up thugs, but also how he got his nicknames Thor and Lord of the Hammer. Look but it was that. also the beginning of the end of his glory days. The fall of El Marino Loco. El so that's what Buddy was holding. Well, that one looked like a little ass uh, meat tenderizer, though. I guess that's what he was holding. Marino Loco became famous on social media. He had different songs written about him, but on the other hand, the public expressed mixed reactions to his method of operation. The Gulf Cartel then tried to bring down El Marino Loco legally. They accused him of using stolen weapons, accepting bribes, and stealing El Chive's father's ashes. While only the last bit of those accusations could be confirmed to be true, El Marino couldn't defend himself, and so he was dismissed from the Mexican Navy officially. But you should know that a guy like Loco wouldn't just quit so easily. Some sources claim that he's collaborating with the authorities down at Sonora. So they fired him for the way he, for the way he was real police. Weapons, accepting bribes and stealing El Chive's father's ashes. Dole so Tell then tried to bribes, bring down El Marino Loco. Lee. Again, if he accepted bribes, that's where my question comes into play. Is he's just a psychopath that now he's on now. If you find out he's taking bribes, that means he's just probably a paid hitman, a paid cop that we know of. Or is he, is this a noble effort? One way or the other, he's bullying the bullies. You know, you always hope for for some some kind of purity, somebody that's just doing it to protect people and do the right thing, but there's always some corruption behind it. Humans are too weak not to take the bribe most of the time. 
Just like y'all complain about cooperators. Some people uh, some people are gonna take the cheese. Some people not in, in it for this reason. Some people not in it for that reason. Like things differ, man. It's a nuanced conversation and there's a lot of different character involved. Not characters, but character. Legally, they accused him of using stolen weapons, accepting bribes, and stealing El Chive's father's ashes. While only the last bit of those accusations could be confirmed to be true, El Marino couldn't defend himself, and so he was dismissed from the Mexican Navy so officially. They, so they put him out. But you should know that a guy like Loco wouldn't just quit so easily. Some sources claim that he's collaborating with the authorities down at Sonora to reduce the crime rate caused by the Aztec country at the border. While other sources claim this man is having some fun in Michoacan, where he continues to capture and dress his victims in women's lingerie. And this makes a lot of sense because the Mexican authorities have reported a few cases where criminals in Michoacan were actually seen dressed and handcuffed in female lingerie. Well, there, there you have it. Zoraida, he is on some Batman shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's on some Batman shit. The Gulf Cartel felt they had... Now, is it is it people catching these guys and doing that that humiliation to them in homage to him? Or is he out there playing Batman? That's a good question. In the end of El Marino Loco after his official dismissal from the Mexican Navy, well, what they didn't know is that Loco Show wasn't me. planning on backing down just yet. His unexpected return. Well, as heroic as El Marino Loco seems to be, his actions were against the law. And the crazy part is, it influenced other Mexican officials. About 2,400 suspected criminals were brutally pounced on and tortured between 2013 and 14. Dang. Some of the forms of torture used include placing plastic bags over the heads of victims to coerce them into divulging information. In one of the more gruesome cases, a video was leaked to the U.S. site Breitbart, Texas, showing a federal police agent and a military police officer interrogating, or should I say, torturing a woman with a bag over her head. And keep in mind that they did this without being certain whether or not that woman in question was actually a criminal. So uh, at some point, you cross the threshold and every organization that you think is fighting for the good is torturing some innocent somebody somewhere, man. Leaked footage brought out more criticism on El Marino Loco's unorthodox methods of handling criminals, even after his dismissal from the Navy. But as a form of response to the public, El Marino Loco agreed to an interview in 2021 where he left his final message to Mexico. He said, and I quote, I'm already in Sonora along with my team. None of us are criminals, nor do we have a criminal record. We're ex-military, trained, and prepared for whatever. We don't- Batman, boy. Harm anyone who doesn't owe it. We come from the South, and we've already calmed down fights there. Now it's the North. Than the center. While it's almost obvious that those drug lords got what they deserved, are you for or against the actions of El Marino Loco? I mean, if he's if he's hurting innocent people in any way, then you just another one of them, bro. You just exploit you just exploitation on on the other side of that. If if it's a noble effort, even if he gets paid for it from this person, that person, the other person, whatever. If it's a noble effort, salute to him for fighting back and bullying the bully. Again, you know, they say these militias that are protecting these lands against cartels. Are they militias or are they other smaller cartels that want to be left to their business? Either way, I'm on the side of whoever's not exploiting children, women, uh, you know, and, and, and making victims out of innocent people. You might think that's an unrealistic expectation, but to me, that's the only way any of it makes sense. The rest of this shit is just, we've given psychopathic behavior a place in saying, oh, but that's just the game. We've given it an out. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just the game. You murk innocent people, victimize innocent people, you exploit innocent people because you want to, not because you have to. But we've given them an out because they've convinced the people that you got to murk everything in order to. And it's like, no, nah, I don't think you had to kill that shorty over there. I don't think that little kid had to suffer for that. I think you could have done that without this, but they don't care because they got the power. Right. And what do the sheep do? The sheep are like, yeah, look at them. They're so powerful. And they decide to pick and choose if their cause is noble or not. And they excuse and make a reason for all these abused children and and. Exploited people. I say fuck them. 
If Marino Loco is going to bully the bully, so be it. It is what it is. There's always going to be somebody else, right?